Alrighty, guys, we are doing Monster High, Monster Rescue, Operation Find Cleo. This is going to be part three, so we are actually on chapter four. Uh, well, chapter three, sorry about that. Um, and it's going to, we're going to start on 37. And here we go. <sighs> the next night, Draculaura tiptoed into Dracula. Chip oh my gosh. Uh, last night, no the night, oh my, my gosh. The next night, Dracula tiptoed into Draculaura's room with two mugs of bat tea for Draculaura and Frankie. He noticed right away that her coffin bed was empty, and then he spotted the three sleeping bags on the floor. But when Draculaura pulled back the cover on one of the sleeping bags, he was so startled he tossed the tea, straying high into the air. Draculaura! Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, Draculaura couldn't help giggling at the sudden bat tea shower of her bed. Who is this? Dracula demanded, pointing at Claudine. Who is this, stra this stranger? Claudine bristled. Who are you calling stranger? He, she snapped. Dad, Draculaura groaned. This is our friend Claudine. She's a werewolf. She, we found her in the morse. Then she really wants to live up here on the hill, asked Frankie. Claudine nodded. You got no idea what 15 years of living in the den does to a ghoul's hair, she said, using a sharp her sharp claws to comb through her fantastic mane. Can she stay, Dad? begged Draculaura. No, and don't even try this sad ro face routine, Dracula said. That might have worked once, but I'm not falling for that again. It was too late, though. Draculaura was already looking at him with wide, tearful eyes. Her pink lips jutted past her fangs in a pout. Then... Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. Um, They started to tremble. And she wasn't the only one. Now Frankie and Claudine were staring up at Dracula with the same sad expression. Dracula bit his lip and he tried, tried, tried to resist. It's not even that cute, he said. But it was effective. He, okay, he exclaimed, threw his hands into the air. But this is the last one. Ding dong. Now, who is that? Dracula, Dracula yelled. Sorry, guys. Now, who is that? Dracula yelled at his hurried towards the door. Don't worry, Dracula assured Claudine. He's going to love the rest of your family. I just know it. Sure enough, the werewolf pups brought out Dracula's softer side, and before long, he was way more open to the idea of starting a school just for monsters. He just needed a chance to see Frightacious life could be with other monsters instead of living in hiding. Not going to reach any monsters like that, she pointed out. What? Did I miss a page? Yep, I missed a page. Sorry, guys. As soon as Dracula was on board with Monster High, Draculaura and her ghoul friends got a work uh, turning the house into a hill into a fantastic high school. It already had a library full of thousands of books about vampires, mummies, ghosts, werewolves, and monsters of all kind. Next up, they re renovated the cavernous dining room into the crypteria, where hundreds of monsters could uh, gather for meals. With Frankie guidance, they turned the damp, dark basement into a high-tech lab for mad science classes. There was a math class for Claudius and an entire wing devoted to dead languages. When the ghouls weren't spankling, plastering, or painting, they brainstormed all the different, cli uh, different classes Monster High could offer. Haunting music, home ink, study howl. Monster High was going to have it all. There was just one more problem to tackle. 
the student body where heard of high school with the only three students, Dracolora thought, stifling. A sigh as she glanced over to Frankie, who was poring over chemistry books, and Claudine, who was flipping through fashion magazines. True, they were the best school friends she could imagine. But if Monster High was going to be everything she dreamed of, Dracolora knew that she had to find more students. Stat. She switched on her webcam and started another vlog post, telling another monster who might tune in just how much Monster High had to offer. We're determined to rescue the monsters of the world, she said, Ernestine. The freaking, the beastly and downright weird. Only how do we find you? Jackalora refreshed the Vampology homepage. Despite her hopes, the subscriber count was still at a big fat zero. Come on, she groaned. Isn't anyone listening? Frankie glanced up from her textbook. You're not gonna reach any monsters that like that, she pointed out. No wonder your vlog doesn't have any listeners. You're using a normal internet. Uh, yeah, Draculaura replied. That's how it's done. <laughs> yeah, Claudine echoed. Draculaura with a mischievous smile. If you're normal... You gotta use the monster web, Frankie explained. She leaned over Draculaura and started typing on the keyboard. There's a monster web? Draculaura gasped in surprise. She couldn't tear her eyes away from the monitor as the screen flickered and then transformed into a hot pink and black background with an expert click on the mouse. Frankie dragged Dracula's Drax log over to monster web your tgp ip rip ports are all glitching she told dracolora you haven't even been broadcasting this whole time but now behold the monster web available anytime anywhere frankie stretched and yawned as if she hadn't just accomplished the most incredible thing Dracolora has ever seen. Mind blown, Dracolora breathed as she leaned closer to the monitor. Her hand was trembling with excitement as she refreshed the webpage and nothing. Zero subscribers disappointed, Dracolora turned around and asked Frankie and Claudine what else she could do. But the other, other ghouls were yawning, and they crawled into their sleeping bags. Dracolora yawned, too, and it's been a long night. Maybe she'd come up with another idea tomorrow. The next morning, Dracula was enjoying a hot cup of English dread feast tea. When a sudden piercing shriek shattering his peaceful breakfast, he breakfast, oh my gosh, breakfast. He leaped up into the table, sending his breakfast flying through the air and raced through the house to Dracula's room as fast as he could. By the time he flung open the door, Dracula was completely out of breath. He was still managing to ask, what, what is it? Where is it? The total panic. Then he passed narrowed eyes and served the scene. He couldn't see any threats. There was no signs of danger, and the three ghouls didn't seem scared or upset at all. Instead, they were clustered around Draculaura's computer, completely sucked into whatever was the monitor. Claudine glanced and tossed her hair over her shoulder. Where is what? she asked. Whatever it is you were screaming about, Dracula explained. Then Draculaura looked up at her dad and her face was shining with excitement. Monster High has students. Ah, she shrieked, gleeful. I put out all the calls on Vampology vlog, Frankie. 
taught me how to post it on Monster Web. She's a tech genius. Anyway, we got all a zillion emails this morning, Draculaura finished. Claudine jumped up and down. It's all happening, she howled. The monsters are coming, the monsters are coming, the... Claudine pushed mild jump, a new thought struck her. Wait, how are we getting here? How are they getting here? She asked. No one answered. Suddenly, Frankie had a bright idea. You can fly, right? She asked Draculaura. She rubbed her hands together, creating a lightning bolt that jumped from one finger to the next. Maybe if I just asked my electricity and supercharge you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Put it in reverse, Dracula explained, holding up his hands. Nobody electrocutes anybody here. The ghouls exchanged a glance as Dracula rubbed his chin. Dracula rubbed his chin. Deep in thought, he already knew. They wouldn't... They wouldn't give up, so he might as well make sure they did things in the way he approved of. If you're going to collect any of these monsters, you're going to do it in an old-fashioned way, he finally said. I love the old-fashioned way, Frankie said brightly. And you're going to wear helmets, added Dracula. Helmets? Claudine repeated in disbelief. You got any idea what a helmet will do to all this hair? Dracula gave her a pointed look. You? Oh. Do you want to reach the other monsters or not? He asked bluntly. When he put it, it like that, Claudine had to agree the helmets were a no-brainer. And that's how the three ghoul friends found themselves decked out of the most fantastic head protection that Dracula could scare, scar up a short notice. That night, they all met up in the library. Wait here. Dracula told them before he transferred into a bat. Then he fluttered up, up, up all the way to the tallest rafter under the roof. Draculaura watched intently as her father pulled the dust cover wooden box off the highest shelf. Haven't used this thing in centuries, he called down to the ghouls. Hope it still works. What it exactly is it? Dracula flew back to the group and carefully placed the box on the table before... He transferred and transformed into his vampire form. This is the monster mythology, he announced. Then he removed the lid. The ghouls crowded around, eager to see what was inside of the warm pink glowing stone after the box. With a great care, Dracula unlat unlatched the sides of the box, released, relieving the wooden map, covering with the intergatty carvings then he lifted up a ghouling skullet that dangled from the golden chain whoa draculaura breathed in ages past monsters used a mythology to locate another one another but when the humans turned against monsters during the great fright flight our kind all went into hiding for our own protection, Dracula explained. After that, there really didn't seem to be used for anything more. Until now, Draculaura explained as her dad reached forward to drop the chains around the Draculaura's neck. So how does it work? First, you place your fingers on the skull at Dracula explained. Then you say the name of the monsters you're trying to reach. Draculaura checked her eye on in. First up is Cleo Denial, she announced. The message is kind of choppy, but it sounds like she says she's stuck and is ready to settle the score. I worry, expression flickered across Dracula's face, settle the score, he repeated. I don't like the sound of that. We're not about to. Of course not, Dad, Dracula Laura interrupted him. I'm sure that that's just the way monsters feel about being totally alienated for hundreds of years. Once Cleo gets to Monster High, she'll be busy to too busy to want revenge. 
Dracula looked at Draculaura and her friends. Are you sure you want to do this? He asked the ghouls. Totes, Draculaura said. Yes, Frankie echoed. Obviously, Claudine added. Dracula took a deep breath and studied himself. Okay, he said. Say the magic words. Esto monstrum. So, all together. Cleo, Estro, Monstrum. Draculaura, Frankie, and Claudine ch chorus. Draculaura squeezed her eyes shut tight in anticipation, but nothing happened. Draculaura found back a way of disappointment. We'll find another way, she promised herself. Guess you were right, Mr. D. Frankie spoke. This thing doesn't even whoosh. In a flash, the ghouls vanished from the library, leaving Draculaura all alone. And that is the end of part three.